Building rack-mountable systems like this is always an adventure and fraught with more perils than your standard gaming PC. Not only are the cooling requirements a little bit different here, but there are space constraints that would make modern graphics card manufacturers cringe a little bit. It's that size constraint that throws most people off their game, as you can't just take a random off-the-shelf cooler, slap it into a 4U chassis, and call it a day. No, you've got to do a little bit more research, a little bit more digging, and sometimes the best solution will come in a plain white box. Did you know that two out of every three men will experience some form of male-patterned baldness by the time they're 35? Every network admin worth his weight in scotch knows the value of preventative maintenance. So why not apply that same mindset to your hair? That is where Keeps comes in. Keeps is a subscription service designed for men who are dealing with uh, premature deforestation. With Keeps, a licensed doctor will review your information online and recommend the hair loss treatment that's right for you. And don't worry about forgetting your prescription at the pharmacy while you're on a beer run. Instead, your prescription will be shipped to your door every three months. Now, the hair on top of my head is so thick, I can barely get a comb through it. Seriously, my barber charges me double, and I want to do my best to keep him employed. Keeps uses generic, FDA-approved medications, and since there's no name-brand markup, you'll save money while keeping your barber in business for years to come. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash craft or click the link down in the video description and receive 50% off your first order. That's keeps.com slash craft, and thanks again to Keeps for sponsoring today's video. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Off to my right is the latest incarnation of my cloud gaming server. And inside of here is some of the most insane horsepower I have ever crammed into a 4U chassis. This includes an AMD Epic Roam 7742 64 core 128 thread CPU, 256 gigabytes of DDR4 registered ECC memory running at 2666, three Titan X Pascal graphics cards, and around 14 terabytes of flash storage. Just to recap, the system is capable of running up to 12 gaming virtual machines at the same time and streaming to thin clients either over a local area network or over the internet. But the gaming chops aren't why we're here today. We're here to talk about CPU cooling. I built a fair number of servers in my day, so you'd think I know what parts to use and what parts to avoid. But it seems like every single time I put together a 4U chassis, I say the exact same stupid line in my head. And that is, you know, I bet I could fit a 120 millimeter cooler in there. Not that I've ever made that mistake on this channel before. So I'll check the specs on the case for the max CPU cooler height and see 145 millimeters. Perfect, I'm in business. And you'd think after my first mistake, I would have learned. And that's what brings us to today's video, as when I was putting together my cloud gaming server, I once again bought a cooler that was too tall for the 4U chassis. So instead of using the Noctua NHU-12S, I wound up using a Noctua NHU-9. Also, specifically with AMD Epic-based systems, there's another little problem when it comes to using off-the-shelf Threadripper-based coolers, and that is that the orientation of the cooler is offset by 90 degrees, because Threadripper uses an asymmetric mount. So to all the commenters who told me that I had this cooler on the wrong way and I should flip it 90 degrees, I'd love to, but I can't. So while off-the-shelf consumer parts can be made to work inside server chassis, they can also cause pretty major headaches. But I think my large cooler envy ends today, and that's because of what is inside this nondescript looking little box. My friends over at Arctic reached out and asked if I wanted to review the all-new Freezer 4U SP3. And as the name implies, it is a 4U sized cooler that is designed for the SP3 socket. That is the socket that is facing this way instead of this way. And like most server gear, there's no fancy packaging here, just a plain white box and one giant heatsink. Holy crap. <laughs> Now, I have not opened this box prior to this, so you're getting my reaction right here on camera. Let's just start with, holy crap, the look of this thing, and is that one chunky cooler? Now, the first thing I notice on here, besides the eight six millimeter copper heat pipes that run through this thing, is how dense they managed to get the aluminum fins in here. Those are packed in there rather tight. 
But it makes sense that you might need this much cooling considering the latest Epic Milan CPUs are using about 285 watts. Today we're going to be testing on my AMD Epic 7742, which is a measly 225 watt TDP. So we'll see how this does compared to, honestly, what has been a fantastic cooler in the NHU9. But I think the most important thing is, uh, will this even fit in a 4U chassis? It says it will, but that's a giant heat sink. Holy crap. <laughs> so there is our NHU9, and as you can see, the orientation is not ideal because it's blowing all of that hot air from the 225 watts of CPU power directly into the bottom of my 1500 watt Dark Power Pro power supply. Now, on a standard system, this actually wouldn't be that big of a deal if the total system power was somewhere in the neighborhood of 350 to 400 watts, like a typical gaming machine. However, since I have three Titan XPs inside of this box on top of a 225 watt TDP CPU, uh, the power supply gets quite warm as this system can easily draw in excess of 1000 watts. In my air-conditioned server rack, it actually performs pretty decently, but in a standard environment or just running on a desk, uh, I could see this causing a thermal shutdown. So let's go ahead and get this swapped out for the Arctic Freezer. So this thing is definitely a tight fit with the rear fans. In fact, I had to remove my uh, custom grills that I printed here, but it is in there. But I'm already seeing one slight problem. Uh, let me turn the camera to a different angle. The Arctic Freezer 4 USP3 is installed, and if I must say, it is one fantastic looking cooler inside this chassis. But I think we need to get rid of the elephant in the room first and foremost, and that is that this cooler is not fitting in this 4U chassis. The case again is an Inwin R400N, and it's a pretty bog standard 4U case, which is why I'm pretty disappointed that the cooler sticks up by about two mils over the top. In fact, it sticks up so far, I can't put the lid on it. And that's a problem. Which is really unfortunate because I wanna keep the freezer cooler inside this case because it is absolutely phenomenal. Like, blew my mind, will knock your socks off phenomenal. Uh, compared to the Noctua NHU9, which is a fairly respectable cooler in its own right for a 92 mil tower, this thing just blew the doors off it. The Noctua had an idle temp of 38 degrees Celsius and a maximum temp under load of just 63. And that was under a Cinebench R23 synthetic workload using AVX instructions and a full 10 minute stress test. For just a 92 millimeter tower cooler, that is a very impressive result, despite the fact that it was blowing all its hot air straight into my power supply. Testing on the Arctic and we got an idle temperature of 31 degrees Celsius and a maximum load temperature of just 50. And that's with the room having warmed up two degrees Celsius in the time between testing the Noctua and the Arctic cooler, which means we are seeing a 15 degree max delta between the two coolers. Now, both CPU coolers were tested with the chassis in the exact same orientation that is laying flat on my desk here with the lid as closed as it would get. Now, there were no air gaps when I was testing the Arctic cooler, but it didn't exactly latch on the rear of the case either. So while half of me is incredibly impressed and wants to take a Dremel to the top of my chassis so I can run this cooler full time, the other half of me knows that there's another server that sits directly on top of this one and the heat pipes would still interfere in the next U up. Which leads me to a kind of disappointing conclusion in that I wish this cooler was about two millimeters shorter. Now, I will fully admit that I did not look up the specs of the Freezer 4U before I opened the box and put it into the Inwin 400 chassis. But when your product is advertised as 4U friendly, I would assume it would fit in most 4U chassis. So the Arctic Freezer 4U SP3. It is a fantastic cooler for an AMD Epic based system. But unfortunately, all that cooling performance won't actually fit into the 4U chassis that I tested today. 
and I really am disappointed by that because of how good it is. I'm also a little confused as to why Arctic didn't just make this cooler shorter overall. There's almost 15 millimeters of clearance between the bottom of the fans and the top of my RAM DIMM modules, meaning there is plenty of room to have just compressed this down with pretty much the exact same cooling performance. Hopefully in the next revision of this cooler, we'll see a slightly shorter version. In the meantime, if you happen to have a 4U chassis that has 153 millimeters of CPU heatsink clearance, you can pick up the Arctic Freezer 4U SP3 by following the link down in the video description. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with daily shenanigans like this. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is also down in the video description. Thank you all so much for watching this one. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. How do I not have a bottle opener right here? God, I really am off my game. I'm not tired. You're tired. Beer for today is an annual classic in the Sierra Nevada Narwhal 2021 edition. This is an Imperial Stout clocking in at 10.2%. As thick as this pours, I don't think it's as thick as previous years. It's a little bit different aroma than I'm used to from most of the Narwhals. I usually get at least a couple of six packs of this every year because it's a fantastic release. Usually it's a little roastier. I almost want to say this is reminiscent of like a, a nutty brown ale. There's this, 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 there's this earthiness. Yeah, I'm getting more peanut than coffee here. So Sierra Nevada's 2021 Narwhal. Uh, I waited quite a bit longer on this one before I gave my on-camera review because I wanted to get my thoughts together. It feels lacking this year. It, it feels thinner. The flavors aren't quite as bold. To be very clear, in years past, Narwhal has been the dark beer drinker's dark beer. I mean, it is one of the most sought after annual releases that's not, you know, a super expensive barrel aged. It's not a Goose Island Bourbon County Reserve, but it is one heck of a solid stout. And it's a little bit thinner. It's not as roasty. There's not a lot of coffee. It's it's a lot more on the sweet side. It's, it's a lot more sweeter flavors, like there's a little butterscotch, caramel, toffee kind of thing going on. But like I said, the, the predominant flavor that I'm getting is like a brown ale. It's like this peanutty almond type flavor that it's just a lot different than I remember the narwhal being. It's still quite good, but I think this is gonna be my only six pack this year. And I look forward to 2022.